so we can shout you out and say hello to you. Hello, family and friends. It is another Tuesday. Let's talk Tuesday time, as we call it LTT. Come on in, come on in and say hello to us. Let us know that you are with us so that we can shout you out and say hello. Come on in, everybody. Come on in. Sister Too Good is our first person today. Hello, Sister Too Good. Hello, hello, how are you? Is mom with you today? It was good to see her on Sunday and your brother. So we say welcome, welcome to the LTT. Let's talk Tuesday, y'all. Come on in, everyone. Say hello. We are so happy to be here another Tuesday to bring you some information. Sister Wordham said hello. She is in the house. Hello. How are you? She sent me a reminder today about Women's History Month. Today is National Women's Day. She sent me a a reminder. I knew it, but I, I didn't do anything. So... I'm thankful for her to remind me of um, what a great month this is. Deacon Casey say good evening, Pastor and First Lady. Hello, how are you, Deacon Casey, my brother from another? How are you? Come on in, come on in, everybody. Good evening. Minister Armstead is in the house. He said, good evening, precious people. Hello, Lonnie Coleman. How are you? How are you? Bishop Anthony Jones is in the house tonight. Bishop Jones. Hello, how are you? Bishop's Bishop. in the house. Greetings, he said. Pastor Dr. Jones. Lee and First Lady, hello, how are you? Dale Thank you Washington, for good us. evening. Dale Washington is in the house. Hello, hello, everybody. It's a beautiful evening. Frances Wright is in the house. Hello. She said, good evening, Pastor Lady B and BBC family. If y'all didn't see Sister Wright, she was looking good on Sunday, mm, okay? Right. She had on some fly shoes, y'all. I'm trying to tell you, I need to get in her closet, okay? Sister Wright had on some gorgeous shoes on Sunday, so I'm going to have to make a trip on over there. Bishop Jones said, what's up, my people? Hello, hello. How are you? Thank you for joining us. Sister Javet Good is in the house. And of course, she got her signature good oh, evening. Tell her good. I like the play on the name. I like that. Um, welcome, everybody. You know, it's been a lot on TV going on. We're still dealing with this Ukraine stuff in Russia. Good old bully Putin. Putin the bully. That's what he is. The bully. But um, there's so much going on. But there was one thing that I did see that almost, it, it didn't almost brought me, bring me to tears. It did bring me to tears. It was a little girl, young girl. Um, she was in Kyiv, is that how it's pronounced? Yeah. Kyiv. She was in a shelter with other um, family members and people who she probably did not know. And in the case of all the chaos that's going on in her life, she sung the song Let It Go from the Frozen movie and play and all like that. She sung it so beautifully. Everybody in the room just stopped in their tracks and she sung it, I want to say in Russia, because they said people in Ukraine speak Russian and Russians can speak Ukraine, Ukrainian, mm. I guess that is it. Um, but I don't know which language she, she sung it in, but they translated it and it was the tune of Let It Go. So, you know, that just touches, it just touches at your heartstrings and everything. And Pastor said that he saw a video where a family were trying to cross the street, was it? Mm. And got bombed. So, you know. Um, yeah, Sister Wordham, did you see it? You saw it as well. Little girl sang beautifully. She did an awesome job. So, you know, it just shows you 
the compassion that people have and little kids they just they have no idea just what is going on in the world but through all of that chaos she brought so much sunshine and love and care to others and and she's homeless she didn't have a home she has some clothes on her back and everything so we're praying for ukraine that they pull through this i mean like they said russia thought they were going to get this get ukraine in like three four days it did not happen how many days is it 11 12 12 days y'all so we're still praying for ukraine and that they pull through Hello, Sister Mildred Evans. She said, good evening, BBC family members, Pastor Lee and First Lady B. Blessed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for for um, saying that. We really do appreciate you. Elaine Latney, hello. Uh, she said, Seward. good evening, Pastor and First Lady. Reverend Seward is in the house. Happy anniversary to Reverend Seward and Trustee Charles Seward. They had a wonderful, I heard that they had a beautiful um what was it a renewal of their vows and they had a celebration and luther barnes was in the house he sung to them to her mom and i think trustee seward even got a chance to sing with luther barnes so i heard that it was a beautiful evening and celebration so we say happy anniversary to you Mother Samples in the house. She said, good evening, good evening Pastor and First evening. Lady Lee. Hello, hello. Bishop Anthony Jones said, amen. Amen, amen. everybody. Um, of course, we're still praying for the Dawson family, for the loss of Reverend Inez Dawson. We do want to make sure that we continue to pray for the Dawson family. Just a few announcements. Um, Bible study is tomorrow via Zoom. Um, if you are not on our link to get it via Zoom, um, all you have to do is put your email in the chat and we will make sure that a um, invite gets to you directly. Don't forget, y'all. Guess what? The time changes next Sunday or this Sunday coming up. Time changes. Sister Tam said, good evening, Pastor First Lady, actually. and everyone love to you all. Love you as well. Um, the time changes March 13th. That's yes. Sunday. That's Saturday. Sunday. That's Sunday. Well, Sunday. Sunday morning. It's 2 a.m. That's technically yeah, Sunday. Sunday. All right. You lose an hour. Don't be late. You're going to lose an hour. Okay? Don't mm. act like you ain't know. Because I'm telling all y'all on here. I'm telling you. You're losing the hour. Spring but forward. Spring forward, y'all. One more. One hour going forward. Okay. Food pantry. Don't forget our drive through food pantry is March the 14th from 1.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. Please just come. You don't. Anyone. It's open to anyone. Anyone. Okay. All you have to do is drive into the parking lot. Pop your trunk. If you can't pop your trunk, jump out, unlock your trunk, and get back in the car. They will load the stuff up for you in your trunk. Tap your hood so that you know that the hood is shut, and you zoom off. That's it. It's that easy. Easy peasy. That easy. And the way that we have food insecurity in our area, we want you to take advantage of that. That's why we have partnered with the Fredericksburg Food Bank and they do a phenomenal job and we thank God for them for helping our community. So that's March 14th um, from 1.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. All you gotta do is drive in and that's it. Um, I think I wanna say our youth Bible study, the next one, they wanna thank you for joining last Sunday. And the next one is March the 20th at um, 6 p.m. So please, um, if you have any youth in your house and you want to make sure that they have some sort of Bible study teachings going on, have them join us. All you have to do is put your email in here and Sister Tammy, who is online right now, will get your email 
and she will send you a link. Okay. Hey, Sister E. T. B. Brown and e. Andrea B. Clark. Brown is in the house. Hello. She said, "Good evening, Pastor and First Lady. Praying that everything is well with you and yours and everyone else. Love y'all. We love you back. Love you." Sister Andrea Clark is in the house. She said, "Good evening, Church family. Blessings." And Bishop Anthony Johnson. Awesome. Yay. Um, don't forget, March 14th and March 28th, officers, pastoral staff, and anniversary committee. We are celebrating 150 glorious years at Beulah Baptist Church. And we are having a meeting on March 14th and March 28th via Zoom. And um, please join us because we are doing some great things. Pastor's got some vision items that we are going to try to talk about on those dates at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Collegiate Sunday is March the 27th. Wear a t-shirt from your favorite college or your college that you attended or your children's college. It's just all about Collegiate Sunday. We are um, promoting all of the colleges that we want our young people to attend and we're getting a jump because this is about the time where um, students are accepting getting acceptance letters for colleges so we want to promote as much collegiate activity and love as possible okay and this month y'all let's hear a clap boop, boop, boop. you're not clapping mm -hmm. clap mm -hmm. clap I clapped already. You didn't clap. I did. I hit the table. He's not clapping, y'all. This is Women's Month. Yay! Yay! And today, March 8th, is actual, actually Women's International Day is today. But Women's Month, all this month, we got 31 days, y'all, to celebrate us. Yes, us, 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 us. Okay? And so that is this month. And so... Um, Sister Andrea say clap, clap, clap. That's right. Yeah, it's Women's Month. And last but not least, thank you all for your prayers for um, my nephew. It's my sister-in-law's son. He passed away in California with a fatal car crash. So we are keeping the Evans family in prayer, in prayer. All right. So I said a lot. Um... Let me go back. Sister Phillips said, hello, Pastor First Lady hello, and Christian, sister Phillips. and brothers. And um, what else we got? Sister Tammy said, hello, Bishop Jones. Bless you and your family. And Sister Dale Washington's clapping. All the women are clapping. Yay. Bishop Anthony Jones said, hey, Sister Tammy. Hello, up. hello. And we are so thankful for everything. Pastor telling me to go back I up. What did I miss? I read that already. Well, I wasn't, I, I was See y'all? Yeah. Once again, yeah, Bishop Jones, come help your friend over here. Mm -hmm. Please come help him because he's not paying attention mm -hmm. over here. He's telling me to read something that I already read. I got this. It's yeah. Women's Month. I got this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got this, y'all. She thinks she read it. Bishop Jones, Deacon Casey, all the men on the line, come help you pass the lead, because he needs your help with memory. Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister Sam, for prayers for you and your family. Thank you so much, and um, I appreciate it. So today, we, we're going to talk about a couple of things. We're talking about Lent, because we did realize that some people don't know. We can't assume that everybody knows about Lent. And so we have new members, we have older members that do know, we have members that think they know, you know. So we're talking about Lent and the different versions of the Bible because we did have a question sent to our email about which Bible is the best Bible to, to use, um, which Bible gives you different, um, you know, that they can understand that is better for you. And it's really a personal preference, but Pastor's going to go over um, some of the different 
differences in the Bible and everything. But what you starting with tonight? Are you starting with lit or are you starting about the Bible? Which one mm. you doing first? Which one do you want to start with? Which one y'all want to start with? Evelyn, Sister Evelyn said, Baby D, you always got it. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Yay. Thank you so much for saying that. And you got it too. Y'all help me keep it, okay? That's what I'm talking about. All of the women help me keep it. So thank you so much. So which one y'all want to talk about first? Y'all want to talk about Lent first? Or do y'all want to talk about the Bible first? The different versions of the Bible and how we can do it. This is Jaquetta's in the house all the way from Connecticut. Thank you for joining us. She said hello. Hello, how are you? We pray all is well with you and your family. And thank you for joining us. We really do appreciate it. Come on in, everybody. If y'all if y'all can share on your pages, make sure that you share um, and hit like and share. Okay? And it is Let's Talk Tuesday time. So right, Sister so we'll, Dale Washington said Bible, so we're going to start with the Bible. Sister Chu is in the house. Hey, Pat Pat Chu. Chu. She said, Good um, evening, Pastor and First Lady. Okay, I'll, everybody's I'll, saying Bible. Well, I'll, I'll start with Lent since everybody want to hear the Bible, keep you holding you on like they do on TV. But oh, no, man. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do Lent because it's shorter, it's easier. I don't and know, the Bible, the, the Bible, right. the Bible translation piece is gonna it, it it's more intense. So, all right, Lent season. All right, the Lent season start start. Um, Started um, starts on starts on started on Ash Wednesday. That's the beginning of the Lent season, and Ash we do the ashes because um, it's it, we're Lent the forty days, and it, and it's connected to forty days because of Jesus when he went to the wilderness and fasted forty days. Also, forty is significant in the Bible with uh, the forty days of of rain with with Noah. Um, uh, 40 days that Moses fasted when he got the ten com when he got the commandments on Mount Sinai um, so so 40 is significant in, in the Bible 40 years that the children were in the wilderness um, so and then but more specifically and, and more importantly that Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 night and Lent Lent um, comes from the old English word lengthen, and it Lent is all all because Lent is held in the spring. And spring, like we're going to spring forward to daylight saving time, so we're gonna we're gonna extend the day. So Lent just mean is shortened for lengthen, for longer, for lengthen. So that's where you get Lent from. It's the old English word, and it and it extended the days are extended in the spring, and Lent is in the spring, and Ash Wednesday is the first day to start uh, the preparation of uh, uh, penance, um, forgiveness of sins and all and, and all of that because we want to prepare ourselves for the agony that Jesus went through in Passion Week. So that's where Ash Wednesday, uh, so Ash Wednesday symbolizes that one, it reminds us that we all will return to dust, from dust we came to dust we return. So, but up, but more importantly, it signifies that we we all shall die someday because we're just mere dust. We're not here forever. So, um, and and also, it's it's a sign of uh, sadness for our sins that because Jesus died for our sins is because of him, because of our sins he died, and so ashes symbolizes that, and we're we're sorrowful for that. So it also symbolizes that. Then the next thing. We we where where it all why Ash Wednesday was the start of it. Um, Easter, which is the biggest cele Christian ho celebration holiday of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Many many churches in the early years would have baptisms on Easter, so Ash Wednesday. Uh, would signify the start of preparation of fasting, praying, and repentance, preparing people to get baptized on that Resurrection Sunday. So that so so Lent season is, is really a preparation um, period, and also for us to now we we not only prepare, uh, 
we're prepared by by fasting and praying and drawing a better release closer relationship with Christ so uh, Lenten season uh, is all about the sacrifice God has Christ had made for us and for us so normally we give up something during Lent and it's usually something that we love to, to eat um, but you find a lot of love to do, love to do be, because it's also fasting and fa fa when you're fasting you're supposed to give up certain foods and festivities but we don't do that in modern day but in the olden day that's what they used to do and um, and and the ashes come from Palm Sunday come from the palms that were given out the year before on Palm Sunday they burn all the leftover palms and you, that's how you get your ashes um, when I normally do I usually have an old Bible that's that's tattered I, I'll burn some scripture in there and also put oil in there and, and all of that anointing oil which is fine I just believe um, once the word mixed with the with the with the palms and the oil makes a bit makes a difference um, but you don't have to do that so um, understanding that that's that's the Lent season and and no, normally um, when you're fasting and and the reason why we're fasting because we're remembering and reflecting on what Jesus had to do when he when he faced the cross going through the crucifixion so um, we 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 give something up to try to relate to that type of agony that type of suffering and normally while, while you're going through that fasting and praying it usually it usually brings us closer to Christ and many of us are doing it like we're doing a corporate fast at Beulah we go from midnight to noon you only miss breakfast and um, during that time we're praying one for 150th church anniversary praying for spiritual growth praying for maturity and all of uh, all of those type of things um, and and praying you know that God would uh, uh, reveal his continue to reveal his sh sh Shekinah glory to us and especially on Resurrection Sunday um, Lent ends on Good Friday um, for Western Christians for us uh, it ends on Good Friday um, and many many um, uh, Catholics we're not Catholics we're Protestants but many Catholics they don't eat meat on Fridays during Lent they just eat fish um, that's part of their fasting process um, and 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 some of them give up more a lot some of them become vegetarians during the whole season of, of Lent but a lot of us what we do as Protestants we give up sweets or we give up things that we uh, normally uh, like to do and so uh, that's the Lenten season and it's all for the preparation of the Resurrection Sunday um, I'm not sure if that if I left any questions unanswered if you have any if you have any questions about Lent can you put them in the and, chat and, so and, that he and can penitence it? is more a Catholic term so let me say this is more of us recognizing that we're sinners and and we're sorry for the sins that we've committed that we will commit because that's why Jesus had to die for us so it's just it just represents the ashes also symbolize that um, so when you put the ashes on the forehead it's always in the form of a cross because that's a reminder that Jesus was crucified on the cross um, and the ashes remind us that we're, we're, we're human and we our, our life will come to an end someday as we know it on this side of heaven so um, uh, that's that's where the connection with the ashes and in the in the Catholic Church when the priests put the ashes on they normally say from dust you came dust you shall return out of Genesis however um, I say in the name of the Father Son and the Holy Spirit because Jesus died for our cross died for our sins on the cross and um, the three is one and so we we now um, celebrate his resurrection not so much that we were born um, and shaping in iniquity uh, uh, so that's 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 Lent I'm not sure if you want any if there's anything so else I need the to the questions that we had for Lent um, in the emails was 
Does it matter whether you do it in the morning or in the evening? That's fat. What fasting? The no Ash Wednesday. The oh ashes on. no! It, it it really the time doesn't. It's it's because now really, it's just a, it's symbolic. Everything that we do really is just a symbol. And it's and it's how we decide to to exercise it. It doesn't matter whether it's in the evening or in the during the day. Um, just the day is signifying the beginning of a sacrificial forty day process of of preparation, of sacrifice, of prayer, of fasting, of meditation. So it doesn't matter what time of the day you get the ashes. What matters is that after the Ash Wednesday, you start doing the things necessary. To prepare yourself and remember uh, Lent uh, um, it was 40 days and it was a season of preparation for those who are getting baptized on Easter so th so all of those who are getting baptized on Easter were going through a purification sort of process of cleansing and getting ready to be baptized in Christ on Resurrection Sunday so the other question was if you get it in the morning are you supposed to just keep it on for that day, or are yeah. you supposed to yeah, it, keep it, it on for the 40 days? It, all right, so it started out in the Catholic Church, which all Protestant churches came out of. So in the Catholic Church, and in, in when there was only the Catholic Church years ago, um, it, it was ashes were given. They had a worship service, and there, after, when they finished the worship service, they got the ashes. You could You didn't have to keep it on. Um, afterwards, you could you, it didn't it, you didn't have to. However, if you kept the ashes on, you weren't supposed to um, do anything. Have go have any festivities going like go shopping because that was that was seen as an activity or a festivity, and you're not supposed to do that. So a lot of people would take it off because it would be an affront to to God. If you go and have fun or do something afterwards with at with the ashes on your forehead, but today you know you if you leave it on you leave it on if you don't you don't there's no people that, we don't have that same type of understanding of the of the ashes, so it doesn't have the same meaning. Therefore, people normal people in, in the community in religious community wouldn't understand. Um, they wouldn't know, so it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. They are particular ashes. That was another question. What kind of ashes are they? How do you obtain the ashes? The, they are not cigar and no, cigarette ashes. The ashes, the ashes are from palms. We said that they're, they're from the palms. They're from the palms. Like every, after Palm so Sunday, long. all the palms around the world, whatever whatever palms they have, they burn those palms. They've been dedicated. They burn them, then they dedicate the ashes. They package the ashes. I burned sometimes my own ashes. This time I didn't burn them, um, but I had uh, we had ashes. So you, from, you palms. from palms that were dedicated for the for palms for Ash Wednesday, and also we put oil in there and scripture burning, and that's how you get the ashes. But most of the Ash Wednesday ashes are from palms from the previous year. They're always from the previous year, from Palm Sunday. That's how that's how they get all the ashes um, around from around the world. If they sell them or you buy them, they they're they're palms, burnt palms. And I think you explained why it was called Pentecost, right? Because forty days. What do you mean, Pentecost? Pentecost is is fifty days. Why well, I say forty? Um, uh, for yeah. for the forty days. Oh, the other question. I remember they said, is it including weekends or not? Right. Sometimes they, all right, some, some, some people, we, we include Sundays. Some people don't include Sundays. The east, the Eastern part of the world, um, I can't, I'm not, I'm not, I can't remember, but we, we, we include Sundays. Some, some don't include Sundays, but it's usually six and a half weeks. Ash Wednesday usually starts six and a half weeks before Easter. So um, we, we, we count the 40 days. Some people, most people don't include the weekends, but that's more of a personal thing. If you want to include weekends, 
I I do because it's part of the the the, four, the forty days of fasting. I just don't believe in breaking up the forty days like that. So I just go until Good Friday. Okay. Any questions? Cause y'all a little quiet out there today. I don't see no comments or nothing. What is going on? Are y'all listening to what Pastor, Pastor Mia excellent. said? Um, Sister Pat said, "Excellent, Pastor." Andrea Carr, Sister Carr said, thank you. Oh, we purchased the palms from, the palms come, well, we, you, 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 can, you purchase the palms from, like, florists. They, they order the palms. They usually come from wherever, I think most of them, a lot of them come from Israel, but I'm not sure, but I, wherever the palms. We usually purchase them from the floral, um, florists, and they come, some come where you have to you pull, gotta them, pull them apart. You got to pull them apart. Some, um, that's normally how they come. It's a palm, and I wish I had uh, one to show you. But um, they come together, and then you have to pull them apart one by one. And it's like a fan. If you see a, a palm, they, it looks like mm -hmm. a fan. And we pull them apart little bit by little bit, and then we um, put them on the, on the um, table in front of the church in the sanctuary on Palm Sunday and those are the palms that we give away. Um, Sister Del hey. said, we're listening. I have a clear understanding of the palms now. Excellent. Great. And, Brother and Philip said, yes, I am listening and learning a lot. And also, um, re remember, the reason why people fast and pray during Lent season is to to reflect and remind and try to get an appreciation for what Jesus went through in the 40 days of and nights of fasting in the wilderness. That's that's it's that type of that's where the fasting and giving up something and sacrificing for 40 days come from. That's that's the genesis for that. And Sister Elaine, let me say we're listening, First Lady. I'm glad. And Sister Tammy said, great information. That's why we never want to assume that everybody knows. Um, there's always something you can learn every single day, no matter who you are. You could be the best theologian in the world. You could still learn something. And so I'm glad that we're sharing this information. So from Lent, let's take it all the way through Easter. So from mm -hmm. Lent, after Lent, then we go to Palm Sunday. Just go through Palm Sunday real quick. No, Why? well, Palm Sunday is just the um, it's the celebration of Jesus' triumphant entry, triumphant entry into Jerusalem when they were throwing down the palms and the clothes and certain scriptures, and um, he was marching in um, before Passion Week, before he he was betrayed. So Palm Sunday is a celebration of that uh, that day, that event. However, it turns into Passion Week where he's he's betrayed and goes through all that he goes through before the crucifixion. So Sister Andrea said, do the ashes come from a different place? I understand they are burned from the palms of the prior year. What do you mean from a different place? They're not from a different place. It could be, like say the palms that we had at the church were burned and they would be the ashes. So, um, and then some people you can um, order ashes, palm ashes, and they are from the same way. They burn the palms from the previous year. I hope we explain that a little bit better to you, Sister Clark. Um, yeah, all the all ashes, all ashes that are used only come from the palms from the previous year. Yep. Sister Evelyn said, education is power. It sure is. It sure is. So if you have any questions, because I know we're on a slight delay. If you have any questions, put them in the chat while Pastor Lee can answer all of your questions. If you have anything, no matter how small the question is or how big the question is, let's put it out there. Because if you have that question, I'm sure someone else has that same question. So we want to make sure that everybody has an understanding of what the Lent season is about, what Ash Wednesday is about, um, when they put the ashes on your head, on the on your forehead, 
And um, oh, I remember somebody did say, why is it on your head and not maybe your hand, like the back of your hand or something? No, I can't answer that. I also, I don't know. Um, I, I would now I would take a educated guess to say because in the Old Testament, whenever there was mourning and they put ashes on them, they put it on their head. But I don't, I don't know. I, I can't. I don't know. There's no. I don't have a specific reason why we put it on your forehead, other than that's where they put. That's how ashes were worn on their head when they were fasting. So Sister Quack said, I understand they come from the previous year, but who burns them and how do pastors get them? I mean, it could be the, the pastors could do it. They yeah, could like, be a deacon. Like do last it, year, I burned, I, burned the, I burned the palms we had, and I put the oil and the scriptures with it. Um, and I, I did that every year since I've been here. But this past year, we ordered the ashes and um, distribute them. So, but the previous years, I had always burned the palms because we always had some left over. Yep, okay. So, any other questions, please put them in. I hope he addressed everything for that. And then we're gonna move on to the Bible. Which Bible is um, preferred? The breakdowns of the different translations and there are a lot. I try to Google how many translations are there. Did all right. So no, uh, but excuse me. We don't have to do all that. But let let's let's let me let me do this now. There's a, there's there's many versions. There's only one translation that we all read. Translation relates to languages, translating it from one language to another. So we have different versions. All the different versions of the Bible. Right, so for for example, King James, NIV, they're all versions; they're not translations. So that that that's number one. So um, we only we have the English translation of all the Bibles into our la English our language, right? And but why are there so many versions? Now there's three categories, right, of of trans of 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 versions. You have what they call the um, optimal uh, equivalence. You have what they call a, a formal equivalence, and you have functional equivalence. So you have formal, functional, and optimal. Formal, functional, and optional, all equivalents, right? And the formal equivalence, that's when the, the Bible the version was translated from the original text word for word right so and the original text are what they call in the Old Testament was Masoretic text and then you also had the Septuagint um, and I'm going blank and I didn't write it down because I said I, I already knew this stuff um, the Masoretic text the Septuagint and the Byzantine um, scriptures right and you had the text codes and there were a group of scholars that got together and translated from those particular uh, uh, and the Masoretic text was written in um, Aramaic and uh, 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 Greek so and you and you and the Septuagint is a Greek text and so, and you, and you had people take those scriptures and translate them into the English language. So King James did that. They're part of the, f the formal equivalent. They went word for word, right? So you got King James will fall into that word for word. And the, and the next one, the functional um, equivalence, that refers to uh, thought, to thought. So they didn't go word for word. They just wanted to make it easier reading for the person, but try to get the main thought of the of the purpose of the scripture so to make sense rather than just keeping it word for word. So that's NIV and NLT. Those are those versions. They come from uh, functional. The optimal 
are those who are more modern and they paraphrase, but they try to do a balance of word for word along with um, thought to thought and balance it, but they also elaborate a little bit more and sometimes it loses its real meaning of what the, what the writer or the author of that particular letter or scripture is trying to say. So that's some of those modern day, the message. Um, I think um, Pat Chu and Reverend Seward had used, there's another one that's out. Or so the, or, Pat, which one is that that you use? You um, I forget the name so, of it. So, 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 so. Though, though, that's why we, 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 you read different, when you read different versions, sometimes there will be a, a strong difference in the, when you parallel read the scriptures in certain scriptures, because one was thought from thought, it's, it's easier to read, but it, but it's not word for word like King James. However, now this is the issue. The reason why you have different versions coming out even like the new J new King James is because the nuance of a word changes so so rapidly like in our English language for example in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 in the King James is charity right and charity to us today doesn't mean love it means someone being um, giving um, charitable we don't think of love when we think of charity because that's not that doesn't mean the same for us and for some of you who may not know this but i'm going to share with you even in uh second i believe second timothy chapter 2 15 is it where it says to study to show thyself approved the word study in the king james era didn't mean what it means study today so study what they what st what that word study really means is to do your best not to study what we know study to be, right? But you, but but you would you would have to do research and and back word study to find that type of information out. When you find out what word in the Greek that King James was using for the word study, you'll see that that word meant to do your best, and um, and not and it's not what we know as study as far as you know preparing memorizing that type of thing like we do study bible study things of that nature so we need to recognize you know um there's a difference also between you could have word for word but also the nuances of the words change that's why you have uh the new king james version or you get the niv they're trying to they're trying to put it in our modern day vernacular so that we understand it however there are those there are some of those bibles that because they're trying to make sure we understand it, they miss the essence of what the scripture was, what the real meaning of the scripture. That's why at the end of the day, no matter what, you have to do your own word study, no matter what version you, you use, because the, 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 you never want to lose the, the original intent of why the, why the writer wrote that particular letter or why what 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 is god trying to reveal unto us at that particular time what's the context so so all all scripture is inspired by god however there are there are there were there were scholars who sat around and decided how to one to translate from the original text language um from the arabic from the greek right um and how to what words to use and those particular people who sat around the table also had a particular understanding of a particular time a particular context and what they might thought what they may think the nuance is for us may not be the may not have been a nuance for them at that particular time y'all get that did i confuse y'all <laughs> oh the clear word bible so yeah so that that would fall under 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 optimal as well now they're easier to read it we get it right away it's it it reads like 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 we re, you know modern reading and however sometimes it it might go a little too far or add something to it that really may not be the meaning of it and and the key piece is how do we interpret it 
how do we interpret what we read? And so a lot, a lot of the different versions that you might choose to read, um, Reverend Seward and, and I have one too, but uh, I use her because she, she, she brings it. Um, she used to bring it to our classes that we have for the ministers. She has a nice parallel Bible, and if you get a parallel Bible, it gives you three or four different translations right next to each other, so you can read. The, the King James, you can read the NIV, you can read the NLT right next to each other. You can read one, you can read the same verse and just go, you know, from one one uh, version to the next. And so that's you, called the parallel. It's called the parallel Bible. Bible. That's a good Bible to have. Now the other thing about these study Bibles, I need y'all to understand: everyone that writes a study Bible. Or any of the, they all write from a particular purpose, platform, and context. And um, uh, th this is giving you an example. If 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 there's a person who's who has a study Bible, put a study Bible together, or a group of people, and they have a certain uh, value system, they're going to promote that value system in their commentary. So you just can't read commentary. For the sake of reading commentary, because that commentary might have a slant. So just so you just so you understand, um, like if someone if someone really wanted to promote the fact that men are the head of the house and yada yada yada, and women ought to know their place, that's gonna be that's gonna come through in their interpretation and their commentary of those of scripture that 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 will suggest that. All right, and vice versa. So you got to always, that's why you read, you do your own word, your word study. And, and let me give you an example of, of, of what I mean. Um, also, another example. In Acts, where it talks about where the first deacons were, were chosen to become deacons. Um, and, and in there it says, well, let me get a, a uh, Acts chapter 3. I can, I can, let, me, let me do a quick word study for you. Acts chapter 3. Sister Tim, while you look up that, I'm going to read some of the comments. Um, Sister Evelyn said, no, not confused. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Sister Andrea wanted to know which one do you, which Bible or which one or two do you recommend? And I would think that might be where you're at. In your studying, but right. you don't so, know. So for so for like um, if if and, and that and that's a good question because if you if you're just getting into the Bible and learning the Bible, you don't want to read King James as your first Bible. So you want to get NIV or the NLT. But you but you also as you grow, you you'll go back to King James just to see to make sure you could do your word study in any of them, but. If you want more clarity and understanding, NIV and NLT is going to give you that, um, because the way it's written, it's it's hard. We don't speak the way King James speak, the way that was translated, right? Or or, or yeah, translated from the from the text. We don't talk like that anymore. Like I said, charity. You might read charity and not don't understand that's love, you know. And love is 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 one of the most important pieces of, of of the Bible. God so loved the world. So you want to make sure, or you can get the new King James Version. But but for me, I usually tell people who are new to, to reading the Bible, want to understand the Bible, get either NIV, NLT, or or the book. It's called the book. It's a it's a green book with the Bible on it. And it reads it reads in a more modern language. And um, it'll give you, you have better understanding rather than reading something because you could take something out of context in King James easily because a lot of the words, uh, there's words in there that we just don't, we don't, we, don't, we don't speak that way anymore. All right. So um, Sister Tammy said, Parallel Bible is great. All versions are in front of you in one book. And Sister Clark said, yes, I need the clarity. Some people don't like all that, uh, the jargon and stuff. I, myself, I like the um, NLT. I, um, for school and everything, I use the NLT. So I just happen to get more into it that way. 
um, but you do have to cross reference and everything. Um, it's chap it's Acts chapter six. I said chapter three. I don't know what I was thinking about. It's Acts chapter six where they chose the first deacons. And let me and let me say this. I'm gonna say this um theologically. Um deacons um were 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 appointed, deacons were chosen, uh they were they were and and, and I'm gonna give you NLT? Are you no, I got the oh no, I was my my phone kept freezing. I said which version did you want? I got it. Um ch Acts chapter six. I'm just gonna read this for you and give you a quick why word study is important. Um Oh my god, you got it? Yes. I got the NLT, which one you want? It doesn't matter. Um, Actually give me the give me the give me the no, give me the King James. I'll do the King James. Well, but see what said the parallel Bible that I have is good. It has um, the New King James Version, the NLT, the NIV, and the Message. All right, in it. I'm gonna read this. I'm gonna read this. Um, Acts chapter six, verses one through uh, probably down to eight. But just listen, and I'll, and I'll tell you. Uh, um, and then, and then I'll tell you what word I want someone to find it on the NIV, someone to find it in the NLT. I know, but they can write. I'm gonna give them. I'm gonna give them the verse and the word to 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 read, and tell me what it says in your in your in your translation. I need someone with the NIV and the NLT. Um, all right. Um, Acts chapter six, beginning with the first verse. And in those days, the number of disciples was multiplied. There arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Right? Wherefore, brethren, look ye among you seven men of honest report, full of, holy, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. All right, I'm gonna stop there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read verse verse two. Then the twelve called the multitude of disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. That words those words serve tables. That word table. Most people think that's the communion table, and that's why we have deacons handling communion only, right? And the word table, this word is only used in this particular form, but when you look up the, the Greek word, it means finances, because in, in, in the early part of the church, when they sat down at the table, it was to, it was to handle everything, all the matters of the people, including finances, and that's why in some Baptist churches you have you have deacons who handle the finances, not the trustees. And most people don't get that because we're we're, we're we we grew up with the understanding that trustees handle finances and deacons handle the spiritual matters, which is only the the, the communion, baptism, prayer meetings, and that's incorrect. The deacons were over everything, even the finances. And the only reason why we have trustees is because in the state of any state in our union, trustees have to sign on property. Right? So that's where, and then and then trustees just kept overextending their power, and then next you know they were taking over the finances. And that's not, that's so incorrect. But if you do the word study on table, you'll find that the Greek word used for table talks about finances, not communion. That's why when you, you got to understand not only different versions, but you got to also make sure you do the word study. And that word study will, 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 will give you clarity and give you the nuggets, the truth. And then when you know the truth, it sets you free. So, so I wanted to see if, if anyone in that verse, what verse was that? No, this is, this is two. That, it was six, Acts 6 2, but this is NIV now. No, Acts. Oh. I changed it to the NIV. It says the ministry no, but of the I said, word of God in order to right. wait on so, tables. 
Right. And then the NLT version says, wait a minute, two. Two says, um, we apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God, not running a food program. <laughs> right. So does anyone has the English Standard Version? Still in the wrong chapter. The ESV says, And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. That's the ESV. That's the ESV. All right. So so you you won't you won't know what table mean, right, until you do that Greek study. And once you do the Greek study of the word table, you, you, you go to your concordance and you look up the Greek word, you look up what root of that word is, and then you see where else is found in the New Testament. And it's only found right here in this one. And it'll give you that Greek word and it's going to show you that it means finance. And most people don't know that because they read it and they just read it. Now, there's other translations. I, I got to try to find the one where, where it says taking care of finances. But um, I'll see a lot talking right. about food. Right, which is because, but they handled everything. Remember, in in Acts, they brought all the all the all they sold all their goods and brought everything to the to the feet of the apostles. Therefore, they had a group of people that were distributing stuff, but they had to come to the to the apostles for everything because they had nothing because they gave it all to the apostles. And now to get food, to get to get money, to get whatever they needed, they had to come back to them. So they sat down at a table and handled their business. And there were those who were, who were neglecting uh, the Grecians or the Greeks or, and those who were, who were not Jewish and, and showing favoritism. And that's when they said, pick, pick ye, uh, what, 12, seven men, and they handle, handle six men or seven, I can't even remember, I'm going blank, um, handle this matter. And um, she was seven of men to handle this matter. So a lot of them, so a lot of them will, um, will. So a lot of people misread that one verse, just like we miss, you know, some people misread uh, study to study yourself approved. That Greek, that Greek word did not mean study as we know it in our in our vernacular, modern day vernacular. It actually means to. Um, it actually means. That's the that's the Greek word, uh, Pat. Um, trapeza. Trapeza. That's that's the that's the right word. You're right, and it deal and it means a bank or money changers, and that's what most people never get, and they and we keep thinking of talking about communion, the Lord's Supper, food, you know, and it's not. It's talking about real. It's really talking about finances, and that's how you and that's how you learn. That's how you, that's how you, I just showed you how to exegete a text and keep it in its context. And, and because the question that I always had is that why, why in, 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 in certain churches, uh, deacons handle the money and then in other churches they didn't. And, and, and the question was, where did, where did this thing come from that they just handle because if you consecrate, if you if if you ordain somebody and they're set aside and they take a vow on their knees to do right by God, wouldn't they do more better with the money than somebody who doesn't have to take a vow? That I mean, I always thought that was crazy for people who never had to take a vow to 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 get ordained and 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 answer to God for what they do, and yet they don't handle the heavier matters of the church. I thought I just think. And, and, and so when, the, when I did the word search and the research to see what were the, what, what, why, did, why is it a table? It didn't say communion. A table. What, what, what is that meaning of a table? It didn't say communion. So where do we get table? Where do we get communion from? We, we presume, we read into the text rather than allowing the text, exegete the text and allow the truth to come out of doing our, our research and our, and our word study. Does that make sense? All right, y'all. So if y'all have any questions, I know that it was a lot, um, but we are already at 801. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know we went over, y'all. Uh, My, 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Um, maybe we'll do another part two because um, and give you more examples of how to exegete the text and do word study so that we can understand the Bible better. So we hope that you got something out of it. Um, Reverend Phillips said also tithe too. Amen. Yeah, we're gonna I'll, talk, I'll, we're, we'll talk about gonna that. We're going to do a series on stewardship. And also, we, I wanted to make this announcement at the end so that we had a lot of people on so that we can congratulate First Lady Michelle Denise Phillips, Reverend Phillips, her husband, um, has been, uh, was a candidate for um, Arm, of the, Arm of the Lord Church, and he has been called, so we pray that uh, all will go well, and we congratulate them on their eleva elevate, elevation and promotion, spiritual promotion by God. Congratulations to the Phillips. We are so happy for them. Um, Arm of the Lord is blessed to have the two of them, and they are going to do a wonderful job. We're so godly proud of them. So um, we're going to have a little bit of a formal announcement on our page um, congratulating them, but we are so proud of them. Thank you for all your love. I know that they want to say thank you for all your love and support through the years. And Beulah will miss them, but they are doing a new chapter. They have a new assignment that God has blessed them with. Good night, everyone. Good night, love everybody. you. We just want to say hello. our time is our up. Time is up. Thank you for hanging out with us we for can't. about an hour or so. We're a little late today, but hopefully you got something out of it. Um, good night, everybody. Sister Wordham says, congratulations, Phillips. Praise the Lord. Sister Andrea says, God, God bless. bless the Phillips. Good night, all Good night, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Too Good, Andrea good Clark, night, Evelyn Dale. Wordham, Dale Washington, Tammy Jackson, Sister Deacon Tammy. Jackson. The samples, right, the Francis samples. Wright, the Phillipses, Too Good, Here's Coleman, E.T.B. Brown, Beating Francis Wright. Good night, everybody. Good night. We got to go. Say good night. Good night, Jackson. Casey, say good night. Congratulations. Good night. Minister, Minister Armstead. Good night. Good Sister night, Ladney. Everybody. Love y'all.